Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Hopefully, everybody uh, survived the rains and uh, came out a little more unscathed than I did. I ended up with uh, water coming into my house and lost a, a laptop, a cell phone, a TV. Oh, my gosh. Man. Um, I'm trying to piece things back together right now. Uh, but it, it's nice in this pandemic to actually see uh, some faces as, as we're all uh, working from home. Hopefully everybody's uh, staying healthy and your families are all doing well. Uh, and, uh, finally, thanks for joining us. We, we started doing, this is our fourth uh, webinar. We've done Eastern Ohio, Toledo, and our Blue Ash office. Um, it was an idea that was born out of uh, the Toledo office, uh, but uh, Danielle, I think Phyllis, myself, and Jennifer uh, were, were receiving a lot of frequent questions on the same topic. Came up with the idea, let's have an interactive uh, webinar and, and share people what we know and what we don't know. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle, a lot of moving parts right now. We're, we're doing our best to uh, grab them. Uh, so anyways, feel free, uh, if you have a question, uh, feel free to interrupt me and ask it uh, at any, any time. I've kind of broken my presentation out into uh, pieces of legislation and the state uh, is actually in a kind of a anti-stimulus mode right now. Mm -hmm. they, they failed to pass a capital bill, um, which at least on the public works front uh, would have had 200 million for the state capital improvement program uh, 37 and a half a million for the Clean Ohio program, and approximately 40 million for the revolving loan program. Uh, the implications of that, uh, from experience, I know all the project agreements uh, have been processed and are dated uh, July, July 1, but round 34 will not be released until we do have a capital bill. The tricky part of that is you cannot emergency clause capital appropriation because it's subject to referendum. So we're gonna have to wait about 90 days from the time it's, it's signed or it becomes effective. I did uh, communicate Public Works Commission yesterday, and the word I'm getting is do not expect new capital uh, anytime soon. So they're not real optimistic. Uh, the General Assembly is uh, gonna, gonna act on that uh, in a medium fashion. And it, quite frankly, you following the governor, uh, the state, cut its April budget about 866 million uh, just just an hour. So also it, that would have had capital appropriation for the biennium which has an impact on round 35. Uh, I know Director Bailiff uh, has instructed the integrating committees natural assistance councils uh, not to meet, not to finalize their methodologies uh, or solicit applications until they know they have appropriation authority in place. Uh, I think part of that is whenever they pass a capital appropriation bill, uh, they can change the rules of the game. That's why they call it the revised code of conduct, like getting revised. Uh, the state is also uh, failed to pass reappropriation bill, which impacts state capital improvement program, the revolving loan program, the Clean Ohio program. Uh, and those are projects that have already 
been funded are under contractual agreement. General Assembly cannot appropriate beyond biennium that they're in. Uh, so it, things are going to slow down. I can tell you uh, on June 12th, the accounting system uh, shuts down and usually doesn't open back up until the 7th or 10th of July. Uh, so if you do have partial pay estimates uh, from contractors, I would encourage you to get those to the Public Works Commission uh, by the end of May. Uh, they, on their website, if you can get them to them by the end of May, they guarantee payment. Um, I have been told to expect a reappropriation bill uh, soon. Uh, I've been told it's going to be introduced and start in the Senate, which is a little bit different. It usually starts in the House, but right now we'll take it any way we can get it, right? Uh, so again, if, if you have uh, payments that you partial pay, pay estimates, I would encourage you to get those in. The Local Transportation Improvement Program uh, was appropriated last July for the biennium. Uh, that also included the reappropriation. Um, it, let me back up real quick. They can put an emergency clause on the reappropriation bill, so we're, we're hoping as soon as the accounting uh, systems back up, money's going to be moving on on our current active project. Uh, the local transportation improvement program uh, was appropriated uh, last July. Um, it also included the reappropriation uh, component. So those projects uh, for round 34 uh, will be released on July 1. Uh, and that, that program should uh, progress with a very little uh, interruption. Uh, not expecting any hiccups on that front. Uh, projecting out a little bit, uh, the, the local transportation improvement programs probably not going to be as robust uh, next year as, as what we're accustomed to. Nobody's driving right now, so gas tax revenues are are uh, down quite a bit. Will affect uh, that program. It's going to affect uh, the direct distribution to local governments as well as Department of Transportation's uh, budget. So uh, I'm expecting that to taper off a little bit. Uh, the other one is, is if you have a loan deferment uh, for July payments due to the Public Works Commission, and that's uh, going to impact the revolving loan program uh, distribution. Uh, there, that's 800 loans that they're not going to be appropriated or they're not going to collect money on. So expecting a, a little bit of a hit on that. Uh, that's that's pretty much what's going on at Public Works, and I will kick things over to Phyllis. Um, hey, Phyllis, sorry to interrupt, this is Mark. Yes. Uh, Michael, if you wanna just give a, a quick, maybe introduction to your background for the folks who, who didn't join uh, before the call, just a quick introduction for yourself and your background, I think might be helpful for folks. Um, my name's uh, Michael Miller. I started my career uh, as a staffer in the Ohio Senate. Uh, one of the key pieces of the legislation I worked on uh, when I was there was uh, a piece of legislation that created the Public Works Commission. Uh, I eventually uh, went to the Public Works Commission. I was, I was the legislation, legislative liaison uh, for uh, about 10 years, probably the last 15, uh, I was uh, appointed uh, 
director of the Public Works Commission. Um, we administer the Clean Ohio program, uh, local transportation improvement program, state capital improvement program. Um, so it's it's pretty pretty much uh, my background after. After 35 years with the state, I thought I had done my duty to God and state and retired. And I, I, honestly, I had the opportunity to work with uh, pretty much every uh, consulting firm in the state of Ohio uh, over my career with the Public Works Commission. Uh, I always uh, considered CT a leader, and that's how I ended up uh, at CT Consultants. Phyllis, if you want to step in. Uh, yes. Um, I'm Phyllis Dunlap, and I work in the project development um, division for uh, CT. And uh, I've been doing grant administration and uh, application and um, assistance uh, for uh, so I'm going to give you some updates and some information uh, that I'm aware of, and please feel free to ask questions. Um, for Ohio uh, Water Development Authority, OWDA, they are still offering local governments low interest loans. That, those are still moving. The current uh, 5 to 20 year loan rate is 2.37%. Um, those loans cannot be deferred. The authority relies on the loan payments to make on payments. So um, no deferment on those. We did check on the emergency relief program to see if uh, communities could apply for that. Uh, revenue loss is not eligible under that program. Uh, representatives Wilkin, Wilkin and O'Brien introduced legislation HB 264, which would allow OWDA to the ability to refinance debt not necessarily their debt, but possibly other debt, such as USDA. Um, that went to the Senate and was referred to committee May 6th. So that may be uh, useful for some communities in the future. OWDA board approved an interagency agreement with Ohio EPA for the disbursement of the H2O uh, funds. However, the H2O funds are on hold. There was uh, a rule change for the Brownfield and our alternative storm water fund programs. Um, they uh, are now having the applicant be responsible for legal fees up to $15,000. And uh, they have defined how they're calculating contract interest rates. So if you're interested in those programs, you'd want to check that out. Um, for um, the Ohio EPA, uh, again, business as usual, they're still doing uh, loans. Uh, water supply revolving loan uh, for construction nominations are already in. Those were due on, um, the, I think it was March 4. Um, and, but they are still taking planning and design loan uh, nominations all throughout the year. The next round of nominations is going to be for the WPCLF and the Water Resource Restoration Sponsorship Programs. Um, on those lists could be useful if, um, not, not, not just because you're nominating a project, but also because if the stimulus, um, if they pass a stimulus bill, which would want shovel-ready projects, they may uh, be selecting projects off of those lists. Um, just keep in mind, um, Let's see, the uh, WPCLF, uh, the current interest rate on that is 1.12%. Um, so still the interest rates are, are quite low on those. Um, also with regard to, uh, the, in the last um, downturn in the 08, 09, they, they did uh, look at lists for shovel ready projects. And the MPOs, uh, some of the MPOs are starting to create those lists, so something to watch out for. Um, Ohio Department of Natural Resources has canceled this year's funding 
background for Nature Works. I'm sure most people are already aware of that. Um, we uh, took applications for the PEG grant, but then they are not funding those. Um, land and water recreation remains open. Um, those are due November 16th, but those are 50-50 grants. Um, and we'll have to wait and see if those move forward. Um, the uh, COVID relief fund, uh, I'm sure you're aware that those, those funds um, are for um, expenses associated with uh, the COVID-19 um, and they went to the state and the larger communities, but I know that they're um, working on uh, moving some of that money down to the local government. I'm sure most of you are aware of that. Um, the U.S. Department of uh, Common Economic Development Administration, the EDA, um, did receive additional funds. Um, more communities, most communities are now eligible for those funds. Uh, a lot of these rules still apply. You still have to have uh, your project on the SEDS. Um, um, those are for larger projects. Um, our regional area is, uh, I believe it's the Chicago office. It's on my notes, but let's see. Yes, Chicago regional office. Um, those uh, larger projects, if you, if you have one, we can provide additional information. Um, the floor on those projects is 100,000. Uh, and those, I believe, are one-to-one -one match. Uh, but, um, the percentage of grant is determined by the average unemployment over a 24 month period. So uh, those, those grants can go up to uh, 80%. For CDBG, the state of Ohio has received additional funds for CDBG in addition to their allocation program. Um, the public service cap has been removed for the 19 and 20 program so uh, communities are able to uh, put more money into emergency monthly housing assistance, uh, rental assistance, or other items that would fall into public service. Uh, the state is currently in their application process and most of um, that are in that program I'm sure have submitted your projects already. They are also getting two additional rounds of uh, funding uh, COVID-1 uh, allocation for the state is a little over 46 million, and then they're getting an additional, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, 27 million was for COVID, the first round of COVID, and the second is 37 million. They're having a public hearing on Tuesday next week. They're posting uh, their amendment to the plan, to the action plan on Monday to identify how they're going to uh, utilize those funds. Um, so we'll be watching for that. Um, I would anticipate that they're gonna have some economic development money in there. Um, Lake County CDBG um, received 822,000 uh, for, in the COVID round one, they're not getting any in the second round. Um, they're allocating out of that 800,000, 122,000 to public services, and then the other 700,000 is to assist local businesses through grants and loans. The proposal is to allocate 100,000 to provide technical grants uh, and loans to micro enterprises. That would be five employees or less. And then uh, to uh, provide 600,000 in loans to small businesses, which are 25 or less, or short-term working capital for for-profit for businesses for retention of jobs. So I, I would expect that the state is gonna do something similar, um, have some money available for businesses to retain uh, jobs. They've also allowed uh, communities that have a, an economic development revolving loan fund to modify their grants to do 0% loans, um, 
and some other items that would assist businesses that would not normally be uh, part of their eligibility. Uh, USDA has received funding to provide uh, loans to businesses and industry as well. Um, I went through that kind of fast. Anybody have questions or want to talk about a specific item? I guess I, I would add, Phyllis, the uh, Nature Works program, uh, as well as the Clean Ohio Trail program uh, at ODNR, uh, are also victims of lack of a capital bill. Yeah. But why they're putting those, those uh, programs on. Hey, Phyllis, this is, is Mark. I, I'd seen an article uh, maybe two or three days ago now, I think it was from the 17th of May, um, stating that the H2 Ohio funds were still active. And I thought I might have heard you say something different. Can you repeat or elaborate on those funds? Um, in talking to Jennifer, she had indicated that those funds had been put on hold. Okay. At least for the time being. Thanks. Phyllis Michael, this is Bill. I, <clears throat> I work with a community that uh, over the past couple of days has uh, experienced excessive flooding. Uh, this is typical with, 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 when there's a heavy rainfall that, that like we've had over the past couple of days. They would like to pursue an engineering solution, but again, it comes down to funding. Are, are, there, are, are there funding sources available through the state, uh, you know, to support? You know, again, it, it does have an impact on, uh, on, on, on their local infrastructure. Um, you know, it, it floods both neighborhoods. It flows some of the major arterials in the city. Uh, what, what, what are the options that I can communicate back to the community about what... Uh, you know, is there funding available, resources available to, uh, to help support that an initiative? Um, if the flooding is also impacting uh, the plant or um, the uh, system, they, they could apply for uh, a planning or design loan through the WPCLF. Design loan applications are at 0% interest, and uh, those nominations are taken all year long. Um, if they're in a CDBG eligible area, they could look at possibly getting, um, well, basically CDBG would be more, they would wanna do construction rather than the, um, than the design or the planning. I think uh, the WCLF would probably be the better option. Thank you. Well, the uh, Ohio Public Works Commission has an emergency program, which I think the General Assembly uh, has acknowledged it, it wasn't as robust as it probably should have been. Uh, the bond capacity went from 175 to 200 million, uh, and they changed the percentage, uh, distribution percentage, to try and uh, that, that program up a little bit. Uh, they do not do planning loans. Uh, you have a solution, um, and it's helping safety relate. That's an option, but again, how is they able to appropriate broke fund as we see? Something that you might want to keep your eye on. Um, I I also uh, want to Jennifer asked that I mentioned that if you. Uh, have um, a project that is going to be affected by the fact that there is no current appropriation, you may want to look into getting an extension of time on those projects um, because you're going to have that delay in being able to pay a contractor. 
And the, the game plan with the Public Works Commission, when they do have appropriation authority, everything's uh, dated July 1. They're going to acknowledge that the schedules you, you included in your applications uh, are, are pretty worthless at this point. So I'm going to give everyone the opportunity to uh, resubmit their their schedule. Uh, um, Phyllis, if I can be bold, um, this yes, is Danny. Um, Bill, to your question about the the flooding, um, there's also OWDA has an alternative stormwater program. Uh, OWDA is nice because they take applications the first of every month, so you wouldn't necessarily be waiting. Um, the programs that run through DEFA, of course, they have better interest rates, you know, but they only take applications one time a year. So there is that flexibility. You just have to uh, factor in a, a higher interest rate. Um, there's also, depending on what the flooding is impacting, um, I know Phyllis mentioned about, you know, the utility plants and things like that. But if it's undermined roads, um, you can do things like the state infrastructure bank. You can go to them um, for, for help uh, with those. Now, these are loans, you know, they're not grants, but they are available immediately. Um, and then two, you know, looking at a long-term solution, if the community was at all interested in uh, green infrastructure, you could look at EPA's 319 program, you can look at, um, like Mike said, the OPWC uh, Clean Ohio Green Space Program, um, which is on hold right now. But again, long term, um, if they're interested in those green solutions, those two programs can look at, um, they, they call them non-engineered solutions, non-hydro modification, I think is the word they use. Um, but th there are other, other stormwater drainage kinds of approaches that we can take. It just depends on what the circumstances are. And I think, um, I don't want to speak for Phyllis, but I know if it was on my part of the world, I would want to talk with the community and understand what, what their immediate needs are and what their long-term needs are, because that'll help us craft a funding solution that'll be really responsive and really hit home for them. Agree. Th thank you, Danielle. And, and when I, when I was, service director, service safety director in this community, uh, you know, we did pursue a, a, a couple of studies to really just determine what the, uh, you know, was there in fact an engineering solution with this? There's a significant stream that goes through really the, the middle of town and it, it uh, you know, we've gone from the 100 year flood to every couple of, every twice a year, once or twice a year, we get enough significant uh, rainfall that it, uh, it does flood Main Street in this community. It floods the uh, the senior center. Um, we have our community center, our brand new community center there, and 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 we did put in some green infrastructure to mitigate uh, stormwater there. So we haven't had any flooding there. But and houses, you know, it, it certainly has a has a an impact on on, on residents, uh, you know, and, and and their 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 housing, you know, that it, it does flood their homes and uh, their backyards and, and surrounding properties. So uh, I, I think it's worth reaching out and, uh, you know, I'll bring uh, one or two of you in and, and, and really continue this discussion with the city. But thank you very much. You know, it occurs to me too, as you were talking about the private homes, FEMA has some programs that um, can help communities either um, put a uh, flood protections around things like I'm thinking now if you think about a historic property that can't be elevated or moved um, that it can't be physically changed then they can put flood barriers around it or with some of the homes that they can either acquire or you know acquire and demolish is basically it if they're repeat repeat uh, flood scenarios or same as the the other example I gave make those homes in some way more resistant to the flooding. I've seen them elevate homes, um, again, put, you know, barriers around it. So there's, there's other different approaches that, that we can take. Um, I, I know it's not a very satisfactory answer sometimes to say, well, it depends. <laughs> but uh, a lot of what, what Phyllis and I do, it really, um, it really does depend on some of the circumstances. So the more we know about it, the earlier we know about it, um, the better, because we can, like 
the WPCLF is a great example. We can get you a better interest rate if we know ahead of time, but we can get you an immediate answer with OWDA if we, if we have to, if there's an immediate need that doesn't fit the state's uh, deadline. No, and that, that's, that, that, that's good information. I, again, it's, it's uh, these bunches that communicated to me at the time that uh, some pumps run 24 seven, you know, and they, they will go through uh, two or three a year in some pumps because they, they run so continuously. So it is, it's a, you know, it, it's a problem even when it, there isn't significant flooding, they're just, they're just in areas that are, that are, uh, that are, are, are not well, you know, just drainage, you know, isn't available to, uh, to mitigate stormwater. I can relate. I, uh, I live in Toledo, which is on the western side of Lake Erie, the western shore, and uh, it's in an area formerly known as the Great Black Swamp. So my sump pump goes round the clock too. I can certainly relate. Hey, Danielle, one, one other thing I guess to add is I think one of the terms you were using, I've heard it as non non-structural BMPs uh, for other programs, and that's coming through Army Corps as well. It might be an area of some additional homework for us, uh, working with Army Corps in two different communities right now, and we have seen in, in with recent meetings, you know, within the last one week, there has been no slowdown on their part. And these two projects in particular, where we're engaged with them are, uh, planning assistance for the communities and you know several tens of thousands of dollars efforts um, and it's a 50 50 match but that's just an example of an avenue that might continue to forward through this uh, without any slowdown absolutely and, and mark when you were talking it brought to mind um you know what i'm doing here i'm kind of adding on to what what phyllis is saying I can't tell you the number of times I've talked to a client, then I go to Phyllis and I say, Phyllis, help me brainstorm this. Or, you know, people like yourself, Mark, that, that know about some of these other things. So even if we're not um, immediately uh, knowledgeable about something, the, the group, the whole collective of CT knows a lot of things. So, um, you know, there's, there's some comfort, I think, in that, that even when I don't have all the answers at my fingertips. It's one phone call away, and then I, I can relay those things back. Yep. Are there any more questions? Bill, this is Chris Kagelnik. Um, I would encourage. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Sorry about that. I was on a construction site. I would encourage the group to consider that, you know, things happen over the course of time, meaning emergencies, and especially in storm water. So the one thing that I think is going to be important is for the communities to document the condition of their infrastructure and how they they've maintained it because if they do have an emergency come up and they want to apply for funding to, to maximize their chances of getting any funding they have to show proof typically of the maintenance and condition of their uh, existing infrastructure um, we've encountered that several times and I, I can't express that enough I have another question for Mike Miller and that deals with emergency funding as we all know, emergencies crop up, and I, we all know that a capital budget has not yet been passed. But my question is, if a capital budget is passed eventually, and the emergency money for OPWC is reinstated, then if there's an emergency in the interim, will OPWC's emergency funds uh, be used to replenish uh, a retroactive emergency? Is that a yes or a no? Uh, that's a no. The Public Works Commission needs to have a project under agreement prior uh, to construction starting, and part of that is, is 
IRS tax code, they consider that refinancing of old debt and it can jeopardize uh, the tax exempt status of the bonds uh, that are being issued. So it, unfortunately, at this point, no, uh, we, we get a capital bill, uh, that, that fund is, is actually, it was drained. Last time it was funded, it was gone the first fiscal day of the year. And that much of a backlog, uh, an emergency. Yeah. Thank you. Well, if we have no more questions, uh, any closing remarks, Michael, Phyllis, Danielle? Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for organizing, Bill. Yes, thank you. My pleasure, and, and I want to encourage. Um, again, we we will we will make this available on YouTube so that you can replay it. It's a lot of information to uh, to digest. Uh, we, we will forward that to you, and please feel free to share that with your with your coworkers, uh, other administrative staff. And again, if you have questions, reach out to to Michael, Phyllis, and and Danielle. And and as Danielle said, it's it's. Uh, CT has a has a has an extensive resource pool of experts that uh, if we can't get you the answer immediately, we will we will do our, our due diligence and uh, and get back to you fairly quickly to uh, so that you can you can respond to your respective communities. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Have a good day.